A light flickers. A flame that we lit in this Easter candle. A light flickers in the night. A simple flame. We uh, are in a different time of history. First time in many of our lives, maybe all of our lives, where a celebration of Easter Vigil is done in an empty church. Light flickers. What's this light say? The church doors are locked. People cannot get in. Many people who I've listened to in these past few days, past few weeks, feel lost at times because they can't have Jesus, can't receive communion. As one person said to me, the spiritual communion is nice, but it's not the body of Jesus Christ. And yet a light flickers in the night. We just celebrated a couple of days in an empty church, high days of holiness, Holy Thursday, Good Friday. Last night, Father Charlie talked about a fist of power or an open hand of love. A light flickers in the night. It's the light of an open hand of love. The doors are locked, but the heart, your hearts of faith could never be locked. A light flickers. You can't see it except on a, a TV screen, computer screen, an iPhone, whatever you're looking at, but you see a light. And that light that flickers is a light of hope. Church doors are locked, but the faith of your heart is never locked, never locked. Even if you shut God off and don't let him in, God still flickers a light in your heart, waiting for you to open your eyes. As we've listened to people on phone, on telephones, and we FaceTime people, all kinds of things. Families are trying to do things for Easter where you can maybe Zoom a family together. Do you know, we're being creative, very creative, very creative. Why? Because our desperation of faith could never be dimmed. A light flickers. It's a light of hope. You know, Jesus Christ went through so much, as we hear uh, yesterday in the Good Friday, a passion. But everything that Jesus went through is a means of healing everything that is within us. Everything Jesus went through physically. He's not saying, you know, I did all this. This is very, I did this for you. This is very difficult. No, everything he did, he went through, is a means of healing everything that is within us. Everything. Everything that darkness can overwhelm us. Things like that darkness that, that Jesus enters into and breaks in with the light. The darkness of fear and confusion. The darkness of the unknown. The unknown. When is this virus going to flatten out? When? How much longer do we have to wait? Am I going to lose my job? I already lost my job. Those are areas of our life that can create that darkness that Jesus Christ comes to flicker that light that flame, to remind us there's more to it than that. There's hope. I think just in talking with people on the phone, 
and, and listening to some parishioners, I think our faith is challenged and is growing. I think as we look at what's happening, people are wanting more. They're wanting what they maybe have been missing. They're wanting things. Many people have maybe haven't gone to church in a while, but they feel something's missing within them, something that they want. What you want, what we all want, is the flicker of a light, of the flame, that flicker of hope. You know, in the future, this is going to be part of history. We're going to be telling many people down the road, years from now, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, about the Easter of 2020, when we couldn't go to church, when that opportunity was taken away from us. And we, we, meaning all of us, because as you can't come through those doors, we fr are frustrated in not letting you through those doors. We want you here. <laughs> our Easter is no different. And what stories are we going to tell our children and grandchildren about the Easter of 2020? It's the Easter that we couldn't get in the doors. It's an Easter to remind us, to remind us clearly about the faith and the hope of the resurrected Jesus, that all that he went through is to heal everything within us. The flicker of a flame leads us to hope.